Hi, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be discussing some of the pros and cons of building a new home versus buying established. Now, I know what you're thinking. You guys love new property. You're only going to mention the pros. However, we are mentioning the cons and there are some serious ones that you need to be aware of if you're considering going down this path. So make sure you stick around to the end because we're going to mention some very important points that you need to be aware of. Let's start off with the pros. Let's recap a few of these that you'll probably already be aware of. However, I think they're all worth mentioning. When you build a house, you get to move into a brand new modern house. If you've ever been into a new house, it is fantastic. It's clean, it's new, you've got all of the fixtures and fittings that you want. It's all made to what you're after and it's fantastic. Going into a new home that you've built for yourself, or whether it's an investment, it really is a cut above being in an established home. So yes, there's a major advantage with new homes. That is that you move into a home, it's exactly how you like it. Clean lines, one of the fantastic things about moving in, brand new fixtures and fittings, and they should be fixtures and fittings that you've chosen. So when you move in, it's everything that you want. It's also fantastic to move into a home that nobody else has lived in. I'm not sure why that is, but moving into a house that nobody's lived in, it's fantastic. Okay, environmentally friendly. The new construction methods that are used these days are far more environmentally friendly than what we were using years ago. And that's also goes down to construction methods and materials. So a new home is generally more environmentally friendly than what an established home is. It's also worth noting that energy efficiency in new homes is far superior to established homes. So if you're wanting to lessen your footprint, a new home may be a way of you doing that, both environmentally friendly and energy efficiency. Now I'm not saying that every house in every instance will be this. However, if that's something that you wanna go down that path of environmentally friendly, you've got the opportunity to do that with a new home. You could even make sure that your home is set up to be zero carbon, or it could be, look, there's a lot of different ways of doing it, but this could be something that you do in your new home. It's far easier to do it with a brand new home than it is with an established home. There are far better grants and incentives for building new. The government do this because they want to continue to stimulate the building and construction industry. Not that it needs much stimulation at the moment. Grants and incentives tend to be directed towards new properties. For example, the first homeowner's grant tends to be that you have to buy new to get the first homeowner's grant. So if you're looking to maximize your grants and incentives, then building new is often the way to do it. In some instances, building a new home can be cheaper than buying established. This is not always the case but in some instances it can be. So you need to weigh up the opportunity of building a new home versus buying established. In many cases, building new can give you a far better result and it can actually be cheaper. Choosing your own design. This is something that you really can't do with an established property. When you build for yourself, you can go down to the minute details to make sure everything is made just the way you like it. You can have a lot of fun with this. You can make sure that your home is just what you want. And that comes down to the design work. If you've ever tried to renovate an old house to make it how you want, you're going to realize just how difficult a process this is. However, when you build new, you can tailor the design to be exactly what you want. Just be careful you don't get too carried away and make sure you're working with someone that understands whether or not it can actually be built. Designs are fantastic, but you need to realize you actually have to be able to build it and you need a builder that can build that design. At the moment, things are tough in the construction industry, so make sure you're not doing anything that's too far out of the ordinary. With the designs, you also have the opportunity to make a design that's going to be popular to the market. You've got to remember that some of these established homes that you may be looking at purchasing may have been built in the 60s, 70s, 80s. The things they were incorporating in designs back then are a lot different to what you may want now. So by doing a contemporary design, something that's modern and designed around the current market, you're probably going to have something that's going to be far more popular. 
you have the opportunity to put things into your designs that are popular now that probably weren't popular years ago and that may be tailored towards a future market. For example, off the top of my head, a lot of people are working from home now. So if you were to build a new home, you'd be able to make a really good home office. And this would be something that would be popular for both owner occupier purchases and also investors. So by producing a new design, you have that ability to see what's popular in the market and incorporate that into your new home design, whether it's for yourself or whether it's for on selling. This is a really big advantage when you're able to do the design work from scratch as opposed to buying an established property. Some designs just aren't readily available, okay? If you've got a certain aspect that you want in your home, chances are that you're gonna need to build new if it's something that's not readily available on the market. Each person has their own unique set of nuances and things that they like in a design. Chances are it's gonna be far easier to incorporate this with a new build than it is with an established build. Some things that you want in a home may just not be on the market at the moment. That's why building new becomes quite a big advantage. New warranties. This is a big one. When you build a new home, you get brand new warranties for your fixtures, your fittings, and of course, for the structure of your home. Now, if you're in Queensland, you'll have a six year structural warranty on all the construction work and each of the fixtures and fittings will have their own warranties. Moving into a brand new home, you have the peace of mind to know that anything that's wrong is going to be fixed either by the builder or by the supplier of the fixtures and fittings. It really does give you peace of mind. When you move into an established home, anything can go wrong and you don't really have any recourse to go back to the seller and say, hey, can you fix this? When you build a new home, you can go back to the builder for six years on anything structural or fixtures and fittings. You can go back to the suppliers and get those things replaced or repaired. So it really does give you peace of mind being in a new home as far as warranties go. On from warranties, let's talk about maintenance. The maintenance in a new home is far less than what you get in an established home. I'm not sure if you've, <laughs> if you've ever been in the situation where you've bought an established home and you're continually undertaking maintenance. I've been down that path. I'm really not keen to go down that again. It feels like you never really get in front. It's just, maintenance after maintenance in some periods of houses. When you get a new house, all things going to plan, the maintenance should be far less. Just keep that in mind. When you're buying an older house, it may look good on the surface, but just make sure that the maintenance isn't gonna do your head in. Also, when you're designing your new home, you can design it around low maintenance. There's a lot of things you can do to your design that can mean you don't have much maintenance down the track. So doing that in the initial parts of your design work means that you can actually structure your life around less maintenance around the house. And that is something that I could really do with myself. This one, I, I don't think that people realize just how hard it is to renovate an older house. If you go through a renovation, depending how big it is, you'll get to the point of no return where it's actually easier to knock it down and start again. I don't think people realize just how hard it is to renovate an old house. And half the time you renovate the old house, half of it's new, half of it's old. You've got old wiring, old plumbing, some old fixtures, some old fittings, some old structure. You're still based around the original design that they had. It is very difficult to renovate an old house to get it exactly how you want. And half the time you've got half new, half old. So it may look good on the inside and the outside, but structurally it may not be any better than it was. A lot of the time it's easier just to knock it over and start again. So make sure when you're looking at the possibility of renovating, weigh it up. You'll be surprised just how quickly the costs of renovating add up and when it's easier just to knock it down and start again. Now with investment properties, there's an extra set of advantages to buying new. Some of these overlap with owner occupiers, some of them are just for investment. I'm gonna mention a couple of these because they're very important if you're looking at investing. When you purchase a new home, generally you'll pay less stamp duty. When you buy on a single contract, that's one contract for the purchase of a house, which is what you will get in the situation where you're buying an established property, it'll be on one contract, you'll pay stamp duty on the whole amount. 
When you have a house and land contract, you only pay stamp duty on the land portion, not on the build portion. So in many instances, you will pay less stamp duty for a new build than you will for an established build. So keep that in mind. Stamp duty can be less on your new build than it would be on a comparable single contract established build. There is far greater depreciation with new properties than with established properties. Depreciation is a really important one. It actually warrants its own video, but I'll go through that in detail on another video. But the depreciation for your fixtures, fittings with a brand new home is far greater than with an established home. Many established homes won't have any depreciation, whereas with a new home, you get quite good depreciation. So remember that for your investment cash flow, depreciation makes a lot of difference and can mean the difference between a positive or negative cash flow. Often new homes are more attractive to tenants. If you've got two homes comparable in the same area, one's brand new, one is fairly old, the new one's going to be more popular with tenants. So when you've got a new home, it can often either get rented quicker, get a higher amount of rent, or just be more popular with tenants. A lot of tenants love moving into a new property as opposed to an established older property. It also goes along with maintenance. When you've got an older property, a property manager is consistently going in there and fixing things all the time, making sure that it's actually still running. With a new property, there's far less to do. When you hand over a new property, the property manager, whoever's managing the property on your behalf, should have the builder's details and the builder's maintenance team so that they can get these things fixed really quickly and easily without any effort from yourself. With an established property, you're gonna be paying out every time the plumber or whoever it may be has to go around there and fix something. That's something worth thinking about with a new investment property. The process of getting things fixed is far easier than with an established property and far cheaper, obviously. We spoke about designs, but with investment and with a new property, you can actually create designs specifically for your investment type. For example, rooming houses, dual occupancies, duplexes, higher yielding properties that you can use new property designs or approvals to do. This is something that's a, a lot harder to do with an established property. I get people ringing me all the time. I've got this older property here. I want to renovate it to turn it into a rooming house or I want to renovate it to turn it into a duplex or I want to renovate it to turn it into a dual occupancy auxiliary, whatever their plan may be. I don't think people realize just how hard a process this is. In many cases, I look at it and say, look, I love your enthusiasm. It's just not something I'd want to be involved in. Here's a builder to deal with who may be able to help you. People don't realize just how hard this is. You've really got to project manage this yourself. If you don't have that skill set, just stay away from it. Uh, going down that path is full of rabbit holes. Renovating is very difficult if you don't have a skill set that goes along with that or if you're not actually involved in that industry. I know a lot of people want to get involved in it, but converting an established house into a dual income, higher yielding property is a hell of a lot harder than what people realise. The rooms are all wrong, the acoustics are wrong, there's so many different parts. It's almost in every case that I've seen people come to me with this, it's easier to knock it down and start again than it is to actually convert that house into what they're wanting to do. People come and they say, look, can we convert this into a rooming house? It's nearly impossible without ripping and gutting the whole thing. And by the time you've gutted the whole thing, you're better off starting again than you were to actually fix it all up again. And the other thing people don't realize is you get a house that's say built in 1960 and you decide you're gonna renovate it. As soon as you start renovating that, you now have to work on today's building codes, which were a lot different to what they were dealing with then, which means things that you didn't plan to, re to replace have to be replaced because otherwise it's not gonna meet today's standards. So as soon as you start renovating an older house, you're gonna get yourself a lot of headaches. So bear in mind that if you're trying to design for a specific purpose, such as dual occupancy, duplex, rooming, whatever it may be, it's far easier to get that design done for a new home than it is to renovate an established one, in most cases. Let's discuss the cons. I know you thought that I wasn't gonna have any cons. There are a heap. I should say at the start, a lot of these cons that I'm gonna talk about can probably be minimized by having a decent builder. If you've got a good builder and you do your due diligence on the builder, 
a lot of these will be minimized. However, you need to be aware that these things can happen and may happen to you. So make sure you've got backup plans for any, <laughs> make sure that you plan for worst case scenarios if any of this happens to you. Okay, let's begin by talking about finance. I'm not gonna to go too in depth with it, but understand that construction finance is different to a standard residential established home purchase. So make sure you're dealing with a broker that understands construction loans. If you're dealing with someone that doesn't, you're gonna create headaches for yourself. Deal with a professional broker that does this all the time that can give you the advice you need regarding construction loans. They are different and there can be potential pitfalls if you're not getting the right loan for yourself. Along that line, there's interest during construction. So what happens when you purchase a new home? Let's just say a house and land package for simplicity. You buy and you settle the block of land and then you pay the builder for each progress claim throughout the build until the end where you're servicing the whole debt. When there's delays, you are paying interest. So anytime there's a delay, it's costing you more money. Just remember that you're paying interest during construction. So anytime that time frame goes out, anytime it extends for whatever circumstances, it's costing you money in interest. When you, build, when you buy an established property, you generally don't have to worry about this as much because you buy it, settle it, and then you've got access to the property. When you're building a new property, you're settling the land, and then in many cases, you're getting drawdowns from the builder, so you're still paying interest. However, you don't have access to the property. It's really important to remember that, that any, any delay in timeframes is gonna cost you money. Brings me to costs and blowouts. Recently, this has been really bad, particularly in Queensland, where we're having a major building boom. When there's blowouts, time frame and costs, this can happen. There's been cases recently where builders just can't build for the price that they promised and have had to go back to clients for more money. If you've got a fixed price contract, you can avoid a lot of that. If you don't have a fixed price contract, you have situations where you may have variations for more money. Just be aware of that. That's something that's been a little bit unavoidable for those that have signed on to non-fixed price contracts. Builders have had a really hard time with trades and suppliers and prices have gone up. People had a lot of issues here budgeting for it because they weren't aware of it. <clears throat> Make sure that when you're building a new property, either you're on a fixed price contract or you've got some sort of buffer in savings to make sure that you can actually service any additional debt or if there's a variation that you actually have money to pay for it. It's really important. It's something that's happening with new properties at the moment when there's not a fixed price contract in place. Okay, time and effort. Look, if you're just buying a standard investment home, it's a lot easier process. But if you're going down that path of actually designing your own home and building a one-off type design, I don't think people realize just how much time and effort goes into it. I've seen people dealing with architects coming up with their dream design and it is a hell of a process. Just remember, if you're going down this path and it's for your own home, you could be going back and forth and back and forth just to get the design done before you even start the process of building it. These big custom one-off home designs can be a really exhausting process. Be aware if you're gonna go down that track, make sure that you've got the time and energy and don't set irrational timeframes. This has to be done by this period. Know that these timeframes can blow out, particularly when it's your own home. And it can be a very stressful process if you're not dealing with a good builder, designer or architect. If you have engaged the wrong builder, there's gonna be a number of things that can happen to you. They will tend to be, there will be quality issues, time blowouts and hidden costs, all costing you time and money. I can't stress enough that you need to engage the right builder. Engaging the right builder will minimize these stressful issues to both your time and your budget. If you're looking to build a new home in a well-established suburb, chances are you're gonna to have to do a knock and rebuild. A knock and rebuild is not the end of the world. In Queensland at the moment, we're probably looking between 25, 35,000, 25 being hard to get. 25 to 35,000 for a demolition of a house, just add into your time frames eight to 12 weeks for this process to take place. Remember that you need to get a BA done, a building approval to actually demolish a house and then you have to get a company to come and demolish it. it to be realistic, 
add eight weeks to this process if you're gonna go down the path of demolition. There may be an opportunity if you have the right house to actually on sell it through a house removal company. This can save you money or it can cost you a lot of time and effort. I'll actually put something together on this down the track, but if you do have to go through the demolition, just know that you're looking 25 to 35,000, plus you've got to get a BA and then you've got to book in a company to do it. There's also, you've got to get the electricity disconnected. All these things add up. It's, it's realistic you need eight weeks in there. Add that to your time frame because that's before you even start building, going to add weeks to what you want to do. This is, <laughs> this is actually funny. Um, I don't think people realise when they design houses or they choose colour schemes, in some cases they really don't look that good. This is a con that you need to be aware of. If you're not a designer or you don't have good taste in colours, just be aware that sometimes you will design the house and get it built and <laughs> choose the colours and it's just not going to look that good. That's something you need to be aware of because I've seen it a fair bit. People have their own, want to put their own spin on things and make it theirs sometimes it just doesn't look that good. So be aware that what looks good up here may not actually look that good <laughs> when it's built. When you're building a new home, you need to, if it's for yourself and you're gonna move in there, you need to actually have somewhere to live whilst you're doing it. And these time frames can blow out. I've seen a lot of first home buyers buying homes and not realizing the time frames involved. And then they're ringing up the builders saying, I need to move in by this date, my lease is up. But there was never gonna be built in that it was actually never a case where it was going to be built in that time frame. Make sure you understand when it could be built and how far it could blow out. This is difficult because you need to maybe contact your property manager and go month to month if possible, very hard at the moment. But just have in the back of your mind some plans as to what you're going to do if there is a delay in getting your house built. You may have to rent for longer. You may have to live with other people. This is something you need to be aware of if it's your own home. If it's an investment property, it's not such a big issue, but just realize that you're not getting rental income. So make sure you can service the loan if there are time delays. But when it's your own home and you're moving in, just make sure that you've got something in place for any changes in. I tend to find that when looking at the established market, I think it's easier to analyze. I think the data is easier than it is with the new property market. So looking at established suburbs, um, time on market, capital growth, yields, all of that is a hell of a lot easier, I find, with an established house than it is with new properties. There may not be comparables on the market at the time. So if you're planning a new home project, there may not be relative comparables for you to actually work out what the on-sale value is going to be. In some suburbs, there's heaps of new homes and you can really work out how much your new home sh should be worth. However, in some suburbs where there's well-established homes but not a lot of new homes, it can be difficult to actually work out what sort of value the home will be worth when it's built. You can talk to real estate agents and really try and gauge this, but in some suburbs, it's far more difficult to establish the value of a new home than it is with an established home. Obviously, when you get an established house, you're going to have established landscaping. When you buy a new house, you've got to allow a period of time for that landscaping to come in. So that's one thing. If you <laughs> bear that in mind, that it does take a little while for a brand new house to sort of fit in as far as the landscaping side of things, for the grass to grow, for the trees to become established, for it to become really tranquil. Okay, <laughs> here's a con that I don't think a lot of people realize. Building a new home may be a harder process than what you realize. This is always a lot more complicated when it's a house that you wanna live in. People, designs become more complicated, building it becomes more complicated. When a builder builds the same home over and over, they become very good at it. They have access to the trades, the supplies, they'll have bill of quantities, and they can work out what a house should cost. However, when you come in with your fancy design that your architect's drawn that has a fish tank wall and all sorts of different things that you want that not many other people do, it becomes very difficult to price. Many builders, will have to go out to all their suppliers. In some instances, they may have to find new suppliers just to give you a price. And in many cases, they're not gonna to wanna to do a fixed price contract because they don't actually know what it's gonna cost them. So just remember that when you get all fancy with your different designs, you really gotta find the right builder to do it and the right builder to price it. And it becomes a lot more difficult to get comparable prices from a couple of different builders. 
and the more complicated it is, the longer the time frame is going to be. So just remember, a standard investment home can be a very easy, painless process. A large one-off architectural custom home can be a very difficult process. So just keep in mind that the process of building your new dream home may be a lot more complicated than what you initially thought. As you're aware, I love all things new property. However, I think it's really important to bring up some of these cons that you may have not been aware of and factor these in. Look, some of the things I've mentioned here won't happen to you and only happen rarely, but it's worth knowing that these things can happen. When you build a new property, if you've got the wrong builder, a lot of these things are more common. Make sure that you're engaging the right builder, engaging the right designer, and a lot of these things will be minimized Building a new home can be a fantastic experience for you. However, if you don't do things right, it can become very, very stressful and cause yourself a lot of headaches. Okay, thanks for tuning in. There's some pros and cons that you need to be aware of. They're not all gonna happen to you, but just keep these in the back of your mind that it is a potential. As always, if you got value from this video, like, subscribe, and tick the little bell so that you're notified with each new video that we upload.